have. Um, hey, so homie. So the blackboard in Kenya didn't send me out. Oh, there were announcements. We were able to say we did it. <laughs> <laughs> What's Mercury up? retrograde be damned, yo. What's they can't up? have Boricuas. What's up, bro? How you doing? I'm well. How are you? Aquí, you know, it's freezing here in uh, in Brooklyn, but you know, we doing what we got to do. We got on our wool socks, so we keep warm. <laughs> I am in Georgia, and everything is going nice here. Um, is that a Studio One Eighty Nine top that you're wearing? It, why it is, um, <laughs> and and I and I don't know if you're referring to me right now, or if you're referring to me on the cover of the next issue of Laborin Kenya that is coming out, where in which I get to roll with the Laborin Kenya wearing Studio One Nine. So. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely it. I love the fact that we got to have such an incredible collection um, at Studio 189's beautiful art that and designs. So this new book that we're going to be publishing uh, in April, is actually April 6th, even though it's available now for pre-order, um, you can mm -hmm. see the cover right behind me. Rosaria is actually wearing on the cover one of these beautifully designed dresses from the Studio 189 collection. But we also have a series of variant covers. And for those who don't know about comics, let me explain that. Variant covers allow you to actually have... Yay! Mira, 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 We figured it out. We figured it out. Sorry about that. That's probably my fault. It's good. It's cool. We're all here. Sure. Definitely, definitely. Oh, my gosh. So uh, I guess we can get right into it. So I was, I was about to explain, so let me finish this and then we'll jump right into you um, as well, Luis. So what we're doing with this book, um, for those that aren't familiar with the way the comic book industry publishes books, we have what are called variants. So oftentimes for the same book, you can have multiple choices of artwork for the same book. So in this case, for the La Borinquena guest starring Rosario Dawson, we actually have eight different variant covers. Oh, and, word? I didn't even know that. <laughs> that's right. Well, your deal... I guess I got a lot of comics to get. I know my <laughs> uncle, Gustavo Vasquez, um, yep. he actually just posted his, which looks really cool. He put a... Of course, my uncle draws me the smallest. Like, I'm in a little window. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, now I want to draw La Borinquena. She got that. La, la, la. I don't have all of that. <laughs> I suffer from no acetal. It's a horrible affliction. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we we uh we're what we're doing with these variant covers is we're showcasing these beautiful designs by Studio 189. So every cover you're gonna see La La Borinquena with Rosario, but she's gonna be wearing a different outfit, you know. So actually I'll just show that real quick right now and then we can actually get into Luis right after that. So Palante. that's, that's Palante. the these are the covers. So if you look at my screen on the bottom. Beautiful. This is actually, the one by uh, Rita Faye. She's an Asian artist from Canada. Then we got this beautiful cover by Bill Sienkiewicz and Chris Sotomayor. This is actually another outfit. You'll see every outfit Rosario is wearing on these covers is one of the Studio 189 um, collection. Yeah. Which and is we cool. Have... That was, those were upcycled pant, uh, shorts, which Mira is Bahia. really cool. So, you know, because our, our whole company is based on making sure that we are not hurting the environment because fashion is the second largest polluter on the planet. So we are really, really conscious about how we make our clothes and upcycling is a big, big part of that. So I love that because I haven't seen this cover. It's my first time seeing it. So I oh. love that that piece is in there. We have hand batik. We use non-toxic dyes, everything natural, organic cotton. You know, we're recognizing everyone along the supply chain paying the farmers correctly and all this kind of stuff. But it's really cool to also see an upcycling piece because people, I think it's like a ridiculous number, like 120 billion articles of clothing is discarded every single year. Oh my gosh. So we cannot sustain like that, obviously. No, we so can't. going and refixing things and repurposing things is really critical. So I love that that piece is in there. Well, thank you so much for explaining that. Hi, Tri one of the pieces. Oh my God. One of the reasons why we wanted to include the Studio 189 collection on these covers is for that very same reason. This whole book is dedicated to raising awareness around the climate crisis. It's also raising awareness around different things that we can do by purchasing this book, by helping us raise money, by even supporting brands like Studio 189. And what you can do to really get involved in terms of like being an active member for environmental justice, which is, is all of what NRDC is all about. So I'm gonna go through the rest of these covers really quickly. This okay. is another one. This is a selfie style because obviously we all know we live in that era. This is by Chris Cross <laughs> and Andrew Crossley. This That's one cool. is, this is Theo Gustavos. This is Gustavo Vasquez's cover. 
It's Just also with my mom the... like this. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for those of you who are hardcore comic book heads, you may recognize this is actually an homage to the first appearance of Captain America on the Avengers cover. And in this case, we have La Urinqueña with her own superhero team, the Nitainos. That's the Gigante, there's Oro, there's Iguaca, and there is Luz, La Luminosa, the Dominican Asian Ooh. superhero. Then we have right. more covers. <laughs> this one. <laughs> cover. This is by Luciano Vecchio. He's actually Argentinian from it, who lives now in Italy. Another one of these Studio 189 yeah. pieces. And she's also wearing some beautiful uh, low top converse on, on that shot as well, which I love as well, dancing some bomba. You know, because we knew you're Rican. You know what I'm saying? It's not just Rican, it's also New York Rican. One of the things we love to do with this campaign is that we're including artists from all over the world. This is Leila Del Duca, who's actually from Brazil. She's actually illustrated this cover for us as well. And then we also have uh, Rafael Albuquerque, who's also from Brazil. This is actually um, also painted by Lee Luffridge, another beautiful image of La Borinquena with uh, Rosario flying over beautiful scenery across the island. That's another thing. The images on these covers are showcasing all the different parts of Puerto Rico, not just San Juan, but like Ponce, Vieques, and so many different parts of the island as well. And, and then you can we see have... the Aggie prints that I'm wearing right now in that previous cover. Oh, right yeah, there. there you go. This is from a previous season. There you go. It's exactly. The exact <laughs> same print that she's wearing on the cover she's wearing on this video right now. And the last two covers, this is from Alvaro Jimenez. Um, from Spain. Yo, you check me out. Look at me flying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last cover <laughs> is with uh, Richard Ortiz from Uruguay. So we have artists internationally that are supporting this, this project. Beautiful Latin American artists, European artists, Asian artists from all over the world. And we're very, very grateful for their support. All of these artists have actually donated the original art on these covers. Um, Rita Faye, who illustrated this, is one of our studio artists, and we got representation of women, people of color, LGBTQ. It's so important to have representation because representation matters, and we are back. And here we go, Luis. Nice. Well, thank you so much for joining. Oh, I'm so excited about this project. Garda and I, we've been talking about this for a while, so to sort of see it come together is amazing. And I, I want to start off by just thanking both of you. Uh, I'm, I'm so inspired in awe of, of your amazing talents and to dedicate, uh, you know, donate your time to this. Uh, really appreciate it. So Luis Martinez here, I uh, joined the Natural Resources Defense Council in 2004, right from Puerto Rico. I used to work at the environmental agency there, uh, working on climate change. And NRDC is an international environmental not-for-profit. We've been around for over 50 years now. Uh, working on human health and the environment, and in particular, uh, climate change and uh, the climate crisis and building climate resiliency. So after Hurricane Maria, I know I was and, and so many people in the diaspora just desperate to help. How can we help Puerto Rico uh, after it had been so impacted? And we managed to uh, partner with groups there, talk to communities, and realized that what they wanted, what they were desperate for was electricity. After days right. and then weeks and then months of that blackout, the second longest worldwide, uh, people just wanted power and they wanted solar power. And communities just started building their own, you know, putting solar uh, panels and um, batteries, like car batteries, they were just doing it, right? So we partnered with them, started building uh, these systems on community centers and realized that this was happening everywhere. Puerto Rico has this opportunity to transition to clean energy, right? There's all of these, uh, right now, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, has about $10 billion that they're going to invest in rebuilding the system. And Puerto Rico's at a crossroads, right? There is uh, a state-of-the-art clean energy distributed solar system uh, like communities are asking for and really just building themselves or back to imported fossil fuels. In this case, uh, liquefied frack gas, which uh, is a horrible idea. Um, but that's, that's where they're at. And so with this partnership with La in Kenya, what we wanted to do was just put a spotlight on this struggle to transition to clean energy. That's not just happening in Puerto Rico. It's happening everywhere. Uh, but Puerto Rico can be a shining example of uh, aquí se hace mejor, right? We, we exactly. do it. We do it better. Um, and so, it, you know, it's been so great to partner with Edgardo, his partner, Kiyong, 
and just see the, the passion that they have for this project, for justice in general, uh, and from Puerto, for Puerto Rico. Um, and just seeing what, you know, what Edgardo has been doing and knowing, you know, our interest in, in EJ and environmental justice. Edgardo, I, I'd love for you to talk a bit more about, you know, how you guys became in, uh, involved in this and, and how you've sort of dedicated uh, all of this effort to raising awareness on, on justice, environmental justice, climate justice, you name it. Well, yes, please, um, because for folks who don't know, he's already raised $165,000 for grants in Puerto Rico by selling these comics, which is the reason why I've really loved collaborating with him and I've been so excited on, on stepping up more. So yes, please, I just want to make sure you know that. <laughs> Thank you, Rosario. And Rosario, you've been an hermana to us from the beginning. Uh, for those that don't know the way the world and the magic of the universe is, Rosario and I first met on the street in 2016 when we were getting ready to do the Puerto Rican Day Parade. It was right yeah. when La Kenya was going to debut, and she was literally in the same street waiting on her float. And we're like, hey, how you doing? And it's like, oh, I got this young woman dressed up as La Kenya. And, and, and from there, I meet her uncle, Gustavo Vasquez, who's a celebrated comic book artist for a few decades now, drawing for DC and Marvel. So this universe kept bringing us together, and, and her love and her true uh, to be, it's a commitment to activism is a, is a shining example for all of us. She uses her platform for so much powerful work. And it's in the spirit of, may he rest in peace, of Sidney Poitier, so many activists who, and artists who have used their platform for generations. Rosario, I have to give you props, Santermana, because you are following in that tradition and you are taking it to another level as a woman dedicated to environmental justice, as a woman dedicated to voting um, rights for, for Latinx across the United States, I feel humbled to be in your presence because our partnership throughout these last few years has been inspiring. Everything we've done for Puerto Rico, everything we've done for voting rights um, across the country with Voto Latino and Poder Latinx has been truly inspirational. But to what Luis was saying, you know, I have to give credit to my partner, Kyung Jan Miranda, Kyung came up with the idea immediately after Hurricane Maria that we needed to start a sustainable program because many people in, 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 a, in a beautiful way immediately responded to Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria. But oftentimes in when there's a crisis, it just kind of dies out, right? It's like people think that everything's going to be solved in like a few weeks or a few months. But Luis just said Puerto Rico went through 11 months without power. You can actually visit the island and still see homes that are covered and blue tarps. And for those who may not be aware, there is, a, there is a literal power crisis happening in Puerto Rico because there are frequent power outages. Puerto Ricans on the average are paying the highest amount of electricity on their electric bills than any other US citizen. It's, it's a travesty, it's an injustice, and the work that we've been doing has been always dedicated to sustainable philanthropy. And when Kian came up with the idea of starting the La Borinquena Grants Program, that's exactly what we did. Rosario joined our team like back in, goodness, like early 2018 when she wrote a short story that her uncle illustrated in Reconstruction. She participated in a, in a few of our pop-up events to help us raise awareness and money. And she'd been, you've been there, Rosario, from, from the very beginning. And our work with these stories is, of course, it's important to have stories with um, characters of color that truly represent the beauty and diversity of our experience as human beings. but. What sets us apart from any other comic book superhero series is that we're dedicated to social justice, not just on the pages and panels, but in real life. We take that idea and it leaves the page and it affects people's lives in a real way. We dedicate ourselves to philanthropy. We're not, we're not, my, my partner and I don't come from a position where we're like, we're like billionaires who are having consultations with PR firms that are saying, we need to do something for your image and maybe give back. We're working mm -hmm. class artists who literally said from the beginning, we should do something that's dedicated to philanthropy. And that's why I think we've had the opportunity to team up with an organization like NRDC, with an artist and activist such as you, Rosario. And La Borinquena has always been about that. Our narratives really raise awareness to environmental justice. Our narratives raise awareness to the climate crisis affecting Puerto Rico. But just like the artists that help support our work by donating these covers, climate change is a global issue. It's not something that's specific to Puerto Rico, it's specific everywhere. And I've been doing research, even though I'm a comic book writer, I've done so much research. There's a consortium of, of German scientists who produced this study called German Watch. And after reading this study, what blew me away is that they identified Puerto Rico on, 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 
in all of the places of the world that it would be the one area hit the strongest by climate change. And we've seen that with earthquakes. We've seen that with Hurricane Maria. But now it's like, let's be proactive. And that's what I really love about this project. It's like, this is what we're able to do when we bring beautiful people with beautiful ideas and passion together. It's all being proactive. And I love what NRDC is doing. I love what Luis has been, how his initiative that he's been leading to really look at renewable energy. And our goal, our dream, I mean, and it really holds on the, the, the support of everyone on this chat and everyone that you share this with, because our hope, everyone who's listening, is that you take these words, you take these images, you take these ideas and you share them with everybody because we're a very small publishing company. We're not Marvel, we're not DC, we're not Disney. This is only gonna be successful through word of mouth. And if we raise enough money, we can set up sustainable power throughout the island and a few different sites. And this is something that we're committed to. We really want to like help a lot of the nonprofits that we're already supporting, nonprofits that NRDC are supporting in Puerto Rico to help them create community hubs that are solar powered so that when there mm -hmm. will be another um, climate storm, and it will happen. I mean, Puerto Rico will always have storms. I mean, we literally create the word huracan. That's a Taino word, you know what I mean? So that's part of our reality. When that next storm comes, hopefully some of these sites that we will empower through this um, philanthropic initiative that we're talking about now, there will be stations that people will come to that will have electricity, that will have Wi-Fi, and, and they, there will be community centers throughout the island. And that's our hope. We want to be yeah. proactive. There's a, there's, a, there's a role for all activists to play. There are activists on the ground that are standing up and speaking out against injustices when they march and they protest. And there are also activists that step up, organize, and create solutions that are proactive. And I think that's what we're all committed to. And I think I want to echo again, uh, Rosario, that's one of the things that inspire me, that you are a proactive activist. Yes, you use your voice to speak out against injustice, but you are very involved. And Luis, the same with you. You are very involved with your work, and you have been since before NRDC. And I think with NRDC, it just gives you a, a bigger platform to kind of make it a, a, a global issue. And it's not just seen as something that's just a Puerto Rican issue just for Puerto Ricans. This is a humanitarian issue. It's a global yeah, thing. It's it's our communities, you know, minority, low income that, that are at the front lines of climate change. So climate resiliency is so important, just getting ready for it. And these sort of projects, solar, battery, community centers, they help people, uh, you know, they, they can be community shelters, they can store their medication, they can store their food, they can organize. So they're so vitally important. So the, the work that we're doing in Puerto Rico right now, we're, we're going to install these at a number of centers, um, but there's so many... Uh, Others that we've looked at and, you know, through the book, uh, we're raising awareness of this transition right. that is happening. Um, and Rosario, I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about your engagement with the project. Uh, I'm just you're such a huge fan. So, uh, huge fan. Everything you do. You know, Edgardo, you, 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 you know, you kind of talked a little bit about that, but I just want to say, you know, what the, what the amazingness, especially as being New Yorkers, we're used to rolling up on each other, going, what's up? <laughs> um, you came through, you had, you know, this woman was dressed up as La Borinquena. I couldn't take my eyes off of her. It was like, oh my God, a, an Afro-Latina superhero. Like just that alone, when we're talking about representation, how am just necessary, just so right. powerful to see the Puerto Rican flag represented on her. It was just so mind blowing. And then to see that she not only was going to be talking about the issues of Puerto Rico from a New Yorkans perspective, going there to the island, getting powers from there. So it's, it resonates with the spiritual aspects. It resonates with the climate change. But we were going to do with, as you said, with reconstruction and the funds from that actually went towards grants to the island. And what I loved about it, you know, was the creativity. It was going, you know, there are so many people in the comic space that would really like to participate and they are never asked. No. And it was so beautiful to see from DC Comics allowing Wonder Woman to be on the cover right. to Frank Miller doing a variant kind of cover from my story right. that I wrote in there. You know, just allowing people to participate and engage and reach out to their communities and be a part of a movement that could make real change possible that wasn't asking permission from anyone else, no. but was just doing it with, with the means that they had and the resources they had and knowing that that interest, that focus, that intention would make an impact and a difference. And so I just keep coming back to La Borinquena, La Borinquena. I keep coming back to her, I keep coming back to you. 
because from everything from the representation that you're showing with the stories and the, the her team that she has to, you know, going, hey, let's use La Borinquena to, you know, educate people about voting. Right. You know, I co-founded Voto Latino. We worked in collaboration with Voto Latinx and with Voto Latino to do PSAs. Right. Uh, I reached out to Zoe Saldana. She did the voice of her in Spanish. I was able to do her voice in English. And, you know, even if that just gets one more person to engage in voting, that's one more person than wouldn't have. Exactly. And that's such a major, major, major deal to recognize that's a piece of the puzzle of activism, but a very critical one. And to see La in Kenya not being afraid of that, you know, you just don't see that from superheroes. You just don't see that in that space as much, you know, they'll allude to the problem, but they won't engage in right. the real world issues of it. And the fact that she is based in the real world, she's based in our here and now, um, and, and belongs to us in our story and our narrative and speaks to the best of us, I think is just so beautiful. So to have this opportunity now again with this new cover, um, and several covers to just, again, include people in this narrative change that we're trying to put out there about what is possible when we come together. And you can do it through entertainment. You can do that and, and still check, check the box of education right. um, and get people excited and, and participatory in a way that maybe and engaged in a way that they're not always reached out. So I, I'm always so thrilled and moved by your vision and That's your nice. follow through. Um, and you know, just how dedicated this is year round. You and I are talking all the time year round over yes. several years, like it's never ending. Um, and so for folks who are out there, you can still support by, you can get reconstruction, yep. which again has an incredible amount of diverse, different artists in there who contributed pieces just so that we could raise money and grants on the ground. And you can also pay attention to when this comes out on April 6th. Can you tell everyone about our launch, please? So our book is going to be in celebration of Earth Day, because like we were saying, this is a project that's about the entire planet. It may be a story that's going to resonate from La Isla del Encanto, Borinque, Puerto Rico, but it's a world story that we're all going to relate to and, and, and hopefully support. So April 6th, the book will come out. You can pre-order it now. If you're already on Instagram with um, on Rosario's account, all you have to do is go to her profile link. That's going to take you directly to the page where you can pre-order the book now. And it's eight different variant covers plus the original cover. You want to buy all nine? Dale. <laughs> Get them all. You know, you want to buy some for your library? You want to buy some for your school? I know recently I was over at MIT and I hinted that we were going to do this book and they were already talking about buying the book. If you're one of these universities that want to buy the books, by all means, you can pre-order these books now. This, this is important because this is really going to help us determine in advance, even though the book comes out on April 6th, pre-orders are very, very important because it's going to help us determine how much money we will raise and how soon we can actually make an impactful project on the ground in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. Like Rosario was talking about with Reconstruction, Reconstruction went into pre-order sales three months before the book came out. We already knew before the release date that we had raised enough money to distribute grants. That was like an incredible reward. And our hope with this campaign is that it'll be that as well. And this, this is philanthropic, but we believe in the idea of sharing. So although there are incredibly successful campaigns where people just say donate $20 or donate $100, we're giving you a story. We're giving you a book that we're working on. We're giving you a book with an incredible roster of talent and artists that have come together internationally to make this story a reality. And although Rosario is on the cover, she's going to be in the book too, <laughs> yo! <laughs> Can you she's also speak, book? before I forget, I know it's not on this on this right now, but I just want to just the, 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 the totality of the different ways that you really reach out and you get different collaborators. Can you talk about... Que bonita bandera that you did. Oh my gosh, I did so much Javito. stuff. I forget. You so, had me, I started doing the video. Can you also you yeah. can talk about the chocolates as well? Oh my I, gosh. I just, I just, I love that you're just nonstop thinking of ways to collaborate with people, to make an impact, to make a difference, and, and if it's to move the needle forward. Okay, so speaking of the needle, so this record is exactly what Rosario was talking about, right? This is produced. Que bonita bandera. There we go. This was produced by me. I was the executive producer of the song. Can you believe that? I went from being a comic book nerd activist to actually writing a song. So I rewrote lyrics to this original classic, Que Bonita Manera. The song was produced by Stretch and Bobito, and it featured an incredible music video that Rosario herself was in, along with Rosie Perez, Laurie Hernandez, Freddie Rodriguez, Ramon Rodriguez, Tony Touch, an incredible roster of Puerto Rican talent. 
Modesto La Sane sang on it, Demi Osorio sang on the song. It was an incredible opportunity. And the reason why is because even though 2020 was the first year of the pandemic, it was the 125th anniversary of the Puerto Rican flag. And a lot of people don't know that the Puerto Rican flag is originally from Nueva York. So just like Rosario was saying, we got this New York energy, this kind of New Yorican energy. Guess what, y'all? The Puerto Rican flag is the first New Yorican. Because it was made in New York City in 1895. So we did this record. If you go to our website, you also can find that as well. Oh, I just saw Sabrina. She just uh, gave us the three flags. Sabrina Sintron also sang on this. The other thing that we did, which is available across the United States and in Puerto Rico, are these Cortez Chocolate Bars. I'm going to fill up the whole screen with that. Look at that. Right? <laughs> so the Cortez Chocolate Bars, this is a 93-year-old chocolate company that's been in Puerto Rico for four generations, and it's still run by the same family, Cortez. They are also committed, this is how beautiful the universe is, to sustainable farming, to environmental justice. It's been something they've always been committed to, generations. They have farms in Puerto Rico and in the Dominican Republic. They're literally the only chocolate company that goes farm to bar because they grow their own cacaos and they manufacture the cacao into these chocolate bars. But what's dope about these chocolate bars is that inside there's a La Borinqueña comic strip that tells you about the history of this chocolate company, but also about the Caribbean heritage that we all have. And these are available in supermercados across the United States. So wherever you find your habituelas and your salsa de tomate, you're going to find the Cortez chocolate bars. And proceeds from these chocolate bars also go to our charitable work in Puerto Rico. So a lot of what we're doing, just like this new project with Rosario and this comic book, is always dedicated to philanthropy. I mean, you can't have a superhero named La Borinqueña and not get back to Puerto Rico. I mean, like, it's just, for me, it's just obvious. It's obvious. Right? <laughs> uh, I have to say also, I'm really loving seeing in the comments people asking about the indigenous of Puerto Rico and uh, the Taino culture. And I, I know that that's very powerfully and beautifully represented um, in La Borinqueña. Can you speak, please speak to that specifically because Certainly. we are talking about climate change and the frontline uh, warriors on, who are out there, who are the most targeted, who are trying to protect our land and water all over the world, our indigenous peoples oh. everywhere, who are being targeted, who are not getting the mic given to them, who are not being celebrated, who are not being recognized for their work. Um, and uh, it's very, very dangerous for them. So it's, again, another reason why I was really moved um, in collaborating with everything that goes on with La Borinquena, specifically because of the rich culture um, that is also expressed within the stories, which I think is really critical to make sure that that um, continues to last and move forward. So please speak to that. Please. So thank you, Rosario. So La mm -hmm. is, a, is, is a comic book series that's inspired by pretty much like the way regular comic books are, right? For those of us who don't know, Comic books have been generally inspired by the Bible, by Greek and Roman mythologies, right? European mythologies for the most part. But the thing is, as indigenous people from the Caribbean, we have our own mythologies. We have our own mysticism. So when I originally came up with the concept to write La Borinquena, I tapped into that history. I tapped into all of that heritage and culture that's already there. I wanted to create a character that really celebrated the indigenous culture, at, while at the same time respecting and honoring our Afro-Caribbean um, heritage as well as our African heritage. That's why she's an Afro-Caribeña. Many people even refer to her as an Afro-Taina. And as a superhero, we wanted her story to be connected to the Taino mysticism and mythology. So one of the beautiful things of doing that is when you start studying Taino mythology, you learn that the supreme deity, and they refer to their deities as semis, not goddesses or gods, as semis, the supreme deity was a woman, Atabe, the mother of creation, the mother of the universe. So it just all kind of beautifully fell together to create a narrative that was like empowering around a, a character that's a woman with an origin that's connected to the feminist energy in Puerto Rico, with an origin that's connected to kind of like this new movement. I'm, I mean, I'm going to get a little like, you know, at the new age here with this age of Aquarius embracing the power of femininity that's out there. And as a man myself, who's been raised by a single mother, who's been raised by powerful mentors like my tia Liliana, my, my mentors Iris and, and, and Dr. Marta Moreno Vega, these women shaped me who I am. Even my wife and partner Kyung shaped me to who I am. And I use my, my platform as a man to kind of like push this narrative forward. I'm raising two sons and I'm raising these two young boys to see the power of femininity, to see the power of this. And by connecting it to our Taino heritage, 
We celebrate the legacy of these, of, of, of our ancestry. And there's this myth. There's this myth that our Taino ancestry has been wiped away and that our Taino lineage has been erased. It's always been in us. It's in, in us. It's part of our DNA. It's part of our, heck, I did my 23 and me. It, it showed me, I got my statistics. I know how much percentage of Taino blood is in my DNA as one of my African, right? So I think La Borinquena is a reflection of that too. And, and it echoes what Rosario was saying. This movement, particularly this collaboration with NRDC, is really in, in innately connected to our heritage as, as peoples of, of indigenous origin, right? Particularly in the Caribbean, particularly globally, because at the forefront is indigenous people that are leading this effort. And if you look at the, at the history of Tainos and other indigenous people, it has always been one that's been in touch, in tune with nature, in touch, in tune with the world. And it's something that we've always been aware of. And I think that the work that we're trying to do with La Kenya, hopefully, celebrates that, connects us to that, reminds us of that, and hopefully reconnects us to a way that we'll learn more about our heritage and our way. And I just wanted to remind people, if people are curious about the book, go to Rosario's um, profile link. You can pre-order the book right now. That's, that's going to be La Borinquena starring La Rosario Dawson. And she's in the book. She's not just going to be on the cover. She's <laughs> actually in the book. And for the, and and I will not not that it's a spoiler, but she's literally going to be herself, you know. Nice. And that and, and she's not going to be like a character that looks like Rosario. She's literally going to be Rosario. And the reason why we decided that she would be perfect in the story is because she's already we, a superhero. You already are, bro. <laughs> you totally are. You are totally that. So it's not. Like, it's, we're not giving you a script. You're literally speaking from the heart. You are passionately committed to social justice. So these words that, that are going to be in the book that you're speaking is just a reflection of everything that you already are. And we're doing this book to raise money to hopefully start a campaign that is already being started by NRDC and continue it across Puerto Rico and introducing solar energy, introducing like renewable energy community centers across the island. Because of Hurricane Maria, we've got to be proactive because there will be more hurricanes like that. We have to be Indeed. committed to Indeed. social justice, but we have to be proactive and create sustainable solutions. It's important that we take our activism to the next level. And this is how all of you can be involved because this is an opportunity to join the movement. When you pre-order this book, when you buy La Borinquena books, you are part of this movement. A lot of people always ask me and Rosario, oh, when's the movie coming out? And my response <laughs> always is, We're Yo, working on it. No. <laughs> yeah, we, I know, right? We're, <laughs> right, right. But, but, you know, right now, we're working on a movement. And that's where the power is, right? This is about a making a movement. So when we do collaborations like Que Bonita Bandera to celebrate our, our island's history and our flag's heritage, when we do a collaboration with Chocolate Cortez and now with NRDC and Rosario, Voto Latino, sí. you know, this is what it's all about, right? With Voto Latino, por el Latinx, it's about being proactive. We're trying to constantly find the space to stay relevant, to stay involved, and to show ourselves and this next generation, what it means to be an activist and what it means to take it to, to, to that next level. I'm, 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 again, I'm, I'm humbled to be in the presence of you both because what you've done, Luis, on, on, the, on the ground in Puerto Rico by installing these solar powered centers already has proven to be a model that we want to emulate and we want to continue to support. And hopefully with the success of this book that Rosario and I are, are joining forces on, we'll be able to engage more people and, and not only to raise awareness, but to raise the funds to continue this work in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. Buy the book, get engaged in your community. You can join NRDC, become an activist, become an activist locally, become an activist in Puerto Rico. Uh, lots to be done in this struggle, but, but the fight is on. And thank you so much, both of you. Uh, I'm so in awe uh, and thankful for, for uh, you guys helping to put a spotlight in Puerto Rico, in the transition to clean energy everywhere, in getting climate resilient communities, uh, in helping those frontline communities get ready. Uh, love you. Love this book. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you. good. Thank La you, Borinquena is going to be the new uh, covers, eight covers. Um, so if you want to get all eight, again, that if you can, if you can afford it or you pick your favorite one, please let us know. Um, and support those artists. But if you can get each one, 
those monies are going to be going to these grants to be doing um, this infrastructure in Puerto Rico to be making a difference um, to push back against climate change. So I just want to say thank you for everyone who came on and watched this. Um, everyone who's going to watch this after I post, I'm going to post this um, with links to follow everyone. So you can follow La Borinquena Comics, you can follow NRDC underscore org. Um, and get more information. Um, we hope to see these pre-orders starting to come in. Uh, La Borin Kenya next issue comes out April 6th. Thank you everyone who listened in. Um, again, please do give us some feedback. We loved, I loved seeing all of your comments on here and to see just how moved and encouraged and motivated and concerned and intentional people are. The comments have just been so alive with people who just are craving, wanting, needing, and supporting this, which is just really, really gorgeous to see. We don't get that good news enough. So I'm so glad that we could do this conversation together and, and commiserate in our desire for a better world and our intention to be engaged and participatory in making it happen. Uh, wepa, be, be, besos to all of you, besitos. <laughs> um, and until we see each other again, when it's safe, te quiero. Un abrazo. Te quiero también, Rosario. Nos Thank vemos you, everybody. Bye, Bye. Bye. Bye.